very great move to have. As we jump into Swiss rounds three here, Matthew on our bottom side, Zayn on our top side, and Sinner and Urshifu lead versus the Chi Yu. Mian Shao. Mian Shao. Mian Shao, great Pokemon. Love I think it. it's such a cool Pokemon and really shuts down a lot of the Pokemon on the other side here. Yeah, and this looks like to be the, the physical fighting Kung Fu League. We got Urshifu, Mian Shao, and Incineroar. You got yeah. like Kung Fu, you got Karate, and you got Pro Wrestling uh, all in the field, and you got a fish as well. Yeah, Incineroar ready to maybe ready to take down Logan Paul, or maybe join Logan Paul, depending on how if he's evil or good on that wrestling front here. But we'll see what happens here. I think Mian Shao is in a great position, puts a lot of pressure onto Incineroar. But do you want to save it so you can deal with maybe that spread moves that will come out later? All I know is that this uh, this Incineroar didn't bring any prime to hydrate this uh, this Chi Yu. It's gonna in fact try to do the quite opposite and try to really starve this one out. This uh, this Chi Yu is gonna be a pretty big threat. I feel like in this game, it has been in the last couple ones we've been seeing. It's also my Terra type Ghost, which actually might be a little bit relevant here since we are seeing some fighting types um, starting to come into play. Fighting type moves as well, and we're also gonna see the fighting type Ghosts on the Urshifu as well. This is a Rapid Strike Urshifu. I know there is a Single Strike out there um, in the pool right now, so this is gonna be the more standard word. But we are gonna see the Psychic come out, and that is gonna hit into the Ghost typing. Uh, so it's not gonna be. Oh, the U-turn's coming out in retaliation, so it's going to take a considerable amount of damage, but it's going to retreat and come back in uh, with a different Pokemon. We're going to see Zane. He's... I mean, if he didn't lead with the Amoongus, I'm not sure if he's going to be running it, but he's running the Incineroar. He's also probably running the Amoongus. Amoongus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also know he has Calyrex in the back. We, we're also seeing Iron Hands here. My guess is that Calyrex is yeah. probably that fourth Pokemon. You want that support move. Chiyu hanging on by a thread. Lose its choice scarf now. So now Chiyu is free to do whatever it wishes. But it's probably going to go the down. the chaos that it so desires upon the world. It'll probably go down before it gets the chance to, unfortunately. It is going to switch back. Uh, it's going to switch out with the Tornadus, it seems he's thinking. He does have, so he doesn't have a Rain Setter, but he's brought Rain Dance with the Prankster, of course, on the Tornadus. So he's going to be a self-sufficient Rain Setter. Um, no other weather coming to play. No one really riding um, with Coridon. Uh, at this tournament today, so no Sunsetters really. Chi Yu's gonna get taken out, swapping in that Terrapagos normal type into these two. A little bit scary, but it should ultimately work out in the end. It is a normal type and it should still have that shell, so unless they double commit into it, which won't even be possible with that Incineroar switching out already, we're gonna see the Urshifu come back and Mien Xiao probably. I mean, it could have gone for a close combat, yeah. But with that ghost typing, it's going to completely block that coming out. Drain Punch in retaliation for the Iron Hands. Not going to heal, but still going to do a lot of damage. Now, some really great switches there. And Zayden is playing really effectively, moving his pieces in and out. And it hasn't taken a ton of damage. He did burn the Shadow, the Ghost type Terra on that Urshifu, but he's in a great position. No Pokemon down yet. He's got Incineroar in the back that he can switch in when he needs to. And he's ready to deal a ton of damage. The interesting thing to look at with this trap goes that makes it different is it has Sleep Talk as a move. Sleep Talk's an interesting move. It is actually a great counter to Amoongus, as if you put it to sleep, it's just going to Sleep Talk, hit one of those other three moves that it's got in the back there, and you'll be in a lot of trouble. And I like that too, because it's basically trading out a Protect or something like that for the opportunity to make Sleep irrelevant to you. And we're going to see the uh, Terrasolation come out already with that. Is that a... Yeah, that is the st Stellar Terra Terrapagos. Okay. So now that Terra Starstorm is going to be in that full spread damage. So we'll see what happens. Full power mode activated on this Terrapagos. <laughs> We're going to see that huge threat coming out into full play here. Although without that Chi Yu, I don't know if Iron Hands would go down in a single hit. Um, maybe with it out, it might because of the special damage or special defense reduction there. Uh, but close combat. Close combat. Definitely make sure it's going to And hurt. the crit. That crit probably matters. Now, if you weren't in a one-shot territory, you definitely are. So, oh, there's Terra the Terra Star yeah. Storm. Can it work out here? I would not be surprised if we see a double KO coming out. And no, not even the single huh? KO. Wow. What? I thought that would have done a lot more, but maybe shocked. that's just the lack of Chi Yu. Really? 
195 on the special attack. I'm not sure if that's regular for a Thrapagos. I was... I'm shocked. I mean, spread moves do do reduce damage in doubles. Granted, we saw how damaging the single target Star Storm was before. With the spread move, with becoming spread move, it is going to be reduced, I believe, by 50%. So I can't say I'm. I mean, if, if that is the case, if that's going to be the factor here with the base power. I don't know if the base power gets up. I don't exactly yeah, know how this. Yeah, it would works. be reduced by 25%. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But I but, mean, we're looking at. A very defensive Iron Hands. Yeah, that Iron Hands special defense is pretty up there. Does it's going to be a hard battle if Trapagos isn't doing that much damage. It didn't even do half to an Iron Hands. Have to figure out how to get it up beside Shiyu in the right position. Tornado's going to come up here. Hopefully Tornado's will do some damage. Eats the fake out. Close combat by Mian Xiao. Finishes off Incineroar. This Mian Xiao is carrying. <laughs> yeah, and I think you have to play around the Mian Xiao with Wide Guard. Wide Guard is very scary. That's a very, this me, I, hey, you know, you know me, all right? I love me, my creative Pokemon strategies, usages. I think this Mian Xiao might be one of the most clever inclusions I've seen here at St. Clair's tournaments. And I really like the rationale behind it. It's not a random pick. It is basically fine-tuned and specifically picked up for this format. It is eventually going to fall and the Chi is going to make its return. With this Tornadus leading out, the Urshifu is going to be coming back into play as well. Uh, that Incineroar went down and I think we still haven't even seen the most likely Calyrex yet. Um, whether or not he's going to go for something here, I don't know if he used Tailwind. Do we see what the Tornadus did before? No, uh, this is Tornadus. I think this is his first real turn out okay. in the field. So we'll have to see what Tornadus does here. Yeah. I think you go for the Tailwind and you hope to get that speed set up. I the thing you have to worry about is that I'm pretty sure Terra Starstorm is a normal type move that won't hit Calyrex. So that's something you have to play around. I oh no, it is a stellar type move. Will it hit Calyrex? He is just going for the normal no rain bleak wind storm. So it's not guaranteed to land, but if you even hit one, you're going to be happy. Uh, so it's a very interesting play to go for. You obviously Aqua Jet takes out Trapagos. Very well played there. A good call out. Because uh, what else could have really happened there, right? It's inevitable. Either way, they would have taken out the Shiyu or taken out the Trapagos. So it just makes us go for it. Liquid Storm. It's going to at least hit the Urshifu, which is going to knock it out, thankfully. Uh, so that is going to be one less Pokemon to worry about. Forcing out the maybe Calyrex. Again, we <laughs> keep saying Calyrex because we don't know for sure. But yeah. Realistically, it's most likely the Calyrex. It's, yeah, it's probably Calyrex in the back here. And there goes down Tornado. So now it's going to be a 2v1, a Chiyu versus Iron Hands and something else. And Chiyu does not stack particularly well into Iron Hands as we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And Chiyu is already really damaged. It's going to be a hard win for Chiyu. But you do something. You need a, a incredibly strong Heat Wave. We'll have to see. Get the reveal of the Calyrex at least, though. The mystery has been unshrouded. It is a Calyrex coming out. But with that Chiyu at about, what, like 5 HP, it's uh, looking to be the end of Battle 1. And it's going to be going first one over to Zane. Which, again, I keep saying it today, but I'm not going to stop repeating myself. Very close game, uh, especially that first um, few turns where they were really just trading back and forth. These trainers are on their game right now. Yeah, Zane played incredibly well there. He made a ton of great reads and made a ton of great predictions. He used that Terra Ghost on the Urshifu mm -hmm. to block the fake out, block all that damage from turn one. Able to make those switches correctly. He didn't even need Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider held in the back. Basically, yeah. I really thought Terrapagos would do a lot more with Choice Specs and that Terra Star Storm, so we'll yeah. have to see if maybe it really does need to be beside that Chiyu to get the most out of its yeah. damage. Which which is just interesting, because again, I, I would assume, because the way it works and the way the Pokemon is, I assumed that the base power would get upped um, when it switches into its stellar form. Like, it would be the same move, but it's a different move. That's what I at least guessed. But it is just the same base power. So it actually is technically getting weaker as you go into your stellar form, which would reduce the damage that you're doing. But again, with the power that Terrapagos has, it was hitting into two relatively strong Pokemon. Um, if this was like a Calyrex or um, like a Chiyu on the other side of the field, maybe we would have seen a couple of KOs there, but with two, pro probably some of the most bulky Pokemon in this format, thinking back, it does make sense that there was no KOs there. Still very, still very shocking. To see. Yeah, and I think the one interesting thing to note here is uh, the Terrapagos and Calyrex, even though they're both hitting with spread moves, 
the Kali Rex is hitting with spread power damage almost double of what Chiyu, okay. it, of there what the Terrapicos is. So that's the question. You're trading a lot of bulk of Terrapicos is incredibly bulky and will stick around for a long time for that Shadow Rider that is incredibly fast and incredibly hard hitting, but will die to pretty much a paper cut. Basically, that's the real give and take. Do you go for light Calyrex, which is Therapagos, or do you go for dark Calyrex, which is, you know, the Shadow Rider? <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of a gamble, a bit of a choice that you have to make here. But as we're getting into game two, we're going to see the Fluttermane Chiyu make the return. If we see, I would not be surprised if we see uh, some KOs in this yeah. very first turn with the special defense reduction, plus Fluttermane just being a very strong Pokemon in and of itself. Um, we're going to see, does it have... The uh, Protosynthesis with the booster energy, yes, it has. So yeah, so yeah. this is going to be a very fast Fluttermane, which really, it's hard not to expect. Fluttermane was a dominant Pokemon for so long and has only seen a downturn of usage because another ghost type walked into the field and said, hello, I am back. Exactly. But with the Incineroar and Urshifu being on the first side of the field here, so... Urshifu is not running any Protect. Incineroar, however, has the fake or uh, the fake out. So it yeah. can get uh, faked out, but... E okay, so it's going to switch out the Chiyu. So no more uh, one-shot real huge threat here. Of course, one-shots are still going to be a problem, but with the uh, Chiyu no longer a factor, it's not going to be guaranteed. <laughs> no, and we see, we see the Urshifu actually switch out for the Iron Hands. Iron Hands... Probably going to be able to take a Fluttermane attack a little bit better. Going for that Moonblast, still super effective, but only really does about half. You say only, but again, that is just one move coming out from one Pokemon that didn't take any damage this turn. Yeah. The Fluttermane is still at 100. It just gets free 50% off of your, you know, not exactly a wall, but as close as you're going to get to a wall in VGC without sacrificing all of your damage, right? This uh, Iron Hands, of course, still very potent of a Pokemon. It even has the Assault Vest, yeah. and it still gets taken down the half. Yeah, I mean, that Iron Hands with the Assault Vest, it's so tanky. So how do you deal with it? Chi Yu coming back in. Fluttermane probably going to look for a big Moonblast here into something. Maybe even an Ice Wind. I'm not sure. Uh, actually, no, because you want to just guarantee the KO. We're ice seeing the Terra. Are we seeing Terra on the Iron Hands? We are. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit that Terra Water type. Iron Hand's not going to be hit by a super effective Moonblast here. We're going to take it. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Drain Punch into that Chi Yu slot. There's the Moonblast. Iron Hand nice. eats it up. Knock off into Chi Yu. So it's going to be another Chi Yu with its specs knocked off. Or heavy Slam. Oh, Heavy Slam again. Knocks out Fluttermane. Very scary. So that's a Scarf Rather going to get knocked off of the Chi Yu. Fluttermane is out of the game. All it got was the 50% on the uh, Iron Hands and a little bit more afterwards, the, the Harassalization. Um, you really want to try to get more value out of your Fluttermane considering the potency that it has and how it can really just take games away completely. But unfortunately, it is going to go down here. You are going to be able to get your Traficos in, however, relatively safely. And this is going to be the setup opportunity. You do have the Chi Yu, so you can go for the Star Storm. None of these Pokemon are faster than any of yours, so I think if you're going to go for it at any point, now would be the time. Although, you might eat a Snarl for it afterwards, which could e honestly even force a switch up, because we saw it wasn't doing a lot of damage before. It's definitely not going to do a lot of damage after eating a Snarl, which I'm pretty sure the Incineroar would survive at least one of these, and Chi Yu it's the same typing as Incineroar, so it's probably not going to threaten to even clean up with the KO. No, I think you really got to look at making the most of Terrapicos now that it's out here. It is out here to do damage, and it's outside beside the partner. It wants to be beside Chiyu. So how much will it do to this Incineroar? That is the question here. We'll have to see. Iron Hands oh. going down is really big. It's now Matthew single here. target damage instead of spread. Oh, which... it lives! Oh, so It lives close. on... Maybe one or two. So it's hard to tell. But wow, I wonder if that was a roll. Oh! 
I didn't even realize he didn't even Terra. So I was talking no. about it doing spread, but he didn't even Terra, which honestly I, I think makes sense. You do actually want to get that single target damage so you can get these uh, Pokemon down really low. It doesn't really help you to get two Pokemon down a little bit when you can get one down a lot like that Incineroar. It's just one sneeze away from getting KO'd. Urshifu's going to be coming out and that's going to be the Calyrex. Or no, Incineroar's just going to get sent back in, get the Intimidate off. Again, not going to matter too much against these Pokemon, but you'll take anything you can get at this point. Urshifu is going to be the threat to beat right now for sure. Uh, but whether or not you're going to be able to do that, you're going to have to get some crafty tricks and switching into Tornadus, which yeah. I like, you know, fighting damage or fighting attacks against the flying type is not going to be very effective, but you have to hope that's what he's thinking to go for here. In any case, both of these trainers are looking to try to make reads on their opponent. So yeah, Terrapagos for training there. I think it's interesting. I think Terrapagos is in such an interesting position. Because of its ability, it will, take, it will take one hit of not super effective damage. So probably not wanting to burn, lose that ability in case something bad goes wrong. But there are the Surging Strikes. That's probably going to be it for Tornadus there. Yeah. I mean... Oh, maybe not. It maybe. might just barely live. No. No, that's it. Tornadus goes down. So you protect the... You protect the Terrapagos, but you lose Tornadus in a time. And now we'll have to see what Chiyu and Tornadus can do. Again, my guess is Shadow Rider is hanging out in the back. It will now come out and out of Shadow Rider and Urshifu versus the Terrapagos and Chiyu. It's a really interesting matchup here. I'm realizing now how important the Urshifu is against the Terrapagos because the ability is just for a single hit. Yeah. You know, Surging Strikes, of course, being multi-hitting, so you would get full damage at least on two of those strikes. Now we have the Terror of Gen There's Shadow eight. Rider. <laughs> You got so, Urshifu and Shadow Rider coming out. Will we see the Terra Stellar hit? I wouldn't I would be shocked if we didn't hear the see the Terra Stellar Star Storm. You haven't burned the Terra yet. If you're not gonna burn it, now is the time to burn it. I mean, you might not even get the chance to I mean actually, because Calyrex would go first with the speed, so you would absorb at least one of those attacks with the shell. So you actually could. That makes sense. And yeah. yeah, and he, of course he is going to go for the Stellar and then try to go for the Star Storm. So yeah, good smart choice on that end. And hopefully here we're going to see some slightly more damage and actually see if our kind of thoughts were right. If it, oh, so, actually he's going to oh, Chi Just Yu. one shot's Chi Yu. That makes a lot of sense. We're not going to have the Beads of Ruin in play anymore. So we're going to have a little bit um, more tankiness afforded to both of these Pokemon here, and he's banking on the fact that this Calyrex will not go down. Even if it did, you got the uh, Focus Sash as yeah. well to worry about. So, this is gonna see. Let's what, see how much damage it's gonna do here. Just a not, little over half. To both. I think. I think if if the fish, if Chi is still alive, oh, that KO. might be enough to knock out the the both Pokemon still alive. There's a surging strikes. Oh, that means the Calyrex or. What's the speed? Or does it have Scarf? Oh, it does have Scarf. That makes sense. Yeah, Kyrex okay. did have Focus Sash, so now that's broken. But let's see what it can hit back with. There's the Psy Shock. There's the reason to use it. Psy Shock gets a knockout, and your winner of round three is Zane. Zane taking a 2-0 over Matthew. That game coming down to the Chi Yu, basically. Maybe, actually, well, it's Surgeon Strike, so it did die in one hit. <laughs> so even if it had a little bit more HP, the second one would have knocked it out. So Chi Yu just being so fragile, plus the typing, not really helping it out, giving it any favors against those Surgeon Strikes. But I'm very confident that if it was able to withstand that damage, we might have still been seeing some gameplay going on. Yeah, I think Zane there played an incredible game and just absolutely read Matthew to mm -hmm. bits. He made some great switches. And it's the reason why Calyrex is such a strong Pokemon that people are bringing it to so many tournaments. Exactly. As much as it's not finding that top success in the in these like events, you still can't like be not be prepared for it. You have to be prepared to face it and you have to be prepared for it to sweep through your team. Zane did a great position of he didn't bring out Calyrex early because he didn't need it. He exactly. left it in the back, and that once everything else was weak, Calyrex can come out, Astro Barrage, pick up the final few kills. I think Terrapagos is a great Pokemon, but we are starting to see some of its downsides. Is it mm -hmm. can't get those one knockout kills like probably the other two Calyrexes can get. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen Ice Rider yet today, so I'm excited That's to see true. how Ice Rider yeah. will do here if it's being played today. And it's interesting to see. Didn't see Amoongus that game. I think we didn't see Zane bring <laughs> out Amoongus as he just didn't need it. His offensive power with the other three mons was just so powerful.
Yeah, I really feel like the Amoongus actually would have slowed him down quite a bit. Um, I feel like every single Pokemon that he did end up bringing represented a threat that had to be addressed immediately, which is more important in a format like this than mitigating threats from your opponent. It's just having threats more significant than their own that they have to worry about mitigating yours. Um, and that's kind of the gamble you're making with Amoongus. It's do they have a solution to my problem or vice versa? And yeah. you're forcing that issue for them, not giving them any real time to think about it. But I do know there's at least one uh, Ice Rider out there. I think we're going to see them in the top four cut, which we're going to be seeing after the conclusion of Swiss Rounds 4, which will be our next and final game for um, of course the Swiss Pools before we head into that top four cut. But before we head over into that, any last words wrapping up? Any thoughts lingering in your head about that last, honestly really impressive game? Yeah, I, I really think Shadow Rider might be on our winning team for today. Everyone who's played Shadow Rider has been so impactful, so we'll see mm -hmm. what Shadow Rider can do in the rest of the tournament today. Yeah, I honestly would be hard. It would be hard to disagree with that sentiment. Shadow Rider showing a very strong opposing threat for everybody here today. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to throw it over to a quick break, and we'll see you guys for round four.